All right, well, I hinted at these earlier, but um, what we're going to talk about in this video is two-dimensional arrays, um, exclusively covering the section on two-dimensional arrays in the textbook. So a two-dimensional array is an array whose values are actually one-dimensional arrays rather than being non-array values. So all of these array values will typically be of the same length. It's not necessarily the case all the time, but usually that's the ones that we will be working with are ones where all the values are the same length. It's kind of rectangular in a sense. Um, we can think of a one-dimensional array as a row of data where every piece of data has its own cell and all these cells are kind of connected next to each other in a line. That's sort of the example that I've been working with this entire time between strings and uh, one-dimensional arrays so far is that you just have this horizontal line of data. A two-dimensional array though can be thought of as a table of data. Now what you can think of is you take one of your one-dimensional arrays, one of those sideways rows that I have, uh, turn it vertical, so you're turning it sideways, and then inside of each of those cells stick more arrays inside of it. So the arrays themselves are the values in the cells, um, and they just, you know, stick out sideways, and all of a sudden you have a table. So a column, our, our two-dimensional array is sort of like a column that holds a line of rows, um, so, sort of. That array kind of, um, when we, when we get our table of data idea, every one of those arrays is going to be a row in the table and the columns in our new table are going to be essentially comprised of, if we look at all of the values in all of the arrays at a specific index. So we can look at the fifth column of a two-dimensional array, which would be every single row at index uh, four, the fifth column would be at index four. Um, and we just took index four of every single row and looked at every single value there. That would be the equivalent of a column there. But yeah, we, we get this idea of making a table, sort of like a table in a spreadsheet or a table in a um, actual database or something like that. That's the idea that we're going towards with our two-dimensional arrays. So for example, uh, we have this string Grammy array, which contains, now this might look like a mixture of strings and numbers and stuff, right? But it's really important to express that all of these, including the years right here, are strings. So everything in a two-dimensional array actually has to be of the same type. All of these have to be strings like this. But we have our rows. So 2019 is row 0, 2020 is row 1, and 2021 is row 2. Uh, row 0, column 2 is this is America. We go to row 0 first and then column 2. Uh, string Grammy at row 1, column 3 will be, we go to the row with um, 2020 in it, right? And then we go to uh, Billie Eilish, which is at column 3. Remember that we start counting at 0 for all of these. But essentially what String Grammy by itself is, is... Um, as an array, String Grammy, like every um, entry in String Grammy, every cell or element or whatever is each horizontal row. So String Grammy at position zero is this whole 2019 thing, and that position one is this whole 2020 thing, and so on and so forth. That's what the two dimensional array really is, is it's an array that holds other arrays, but we sort of abstract it into a table like this. And we stop thinking about it in terms of uh, 
indexing into the outer array and then like to find the correct inner array and then indexing into that inner array to get a particular value like this is America or something like that. Um, instead, we think about it as one table, one cohesive thing where we um, have rows and columns that we index into it with. All right, well, here is how you declare a two-dimensional array. Um, it's very similar to a one-dimensional array, except rather than just putting the maximum uh, subscript by itself in parentheses, you actually pass in the maximum row and then the maximum column separated by a comma. Uh, and this will actually create an array holding max row plus one rows, and then each row has max call plus one column. So you're essentially making a um, max row plus one by max call plus one uh, table. For example, oh, and of course, uh, all the entries are initialized to their default values. But for example, if I have this state capitals array uh, that only holds strings, and let's say I want to store both the um, name of the state and the name of its capital. So for example, California and Sacramento would be in there. If I wanted to have it for every single state, I would have it, I would give it 49 rows and one, uh, sorry, 49 as the max row and one as the max column. Because remember, we start counting by zero. So this actually says that I will have 50 states with uh, two columns, one for the name of the state and one for the uh, actual name of the city. So this is the row number and the column number, so to say. You can also initialize two-dimensional arrays in a very similar way to how you initialize one-dimensional arrays. And the way that you do that is using these curly braces over here again. But within the larger curly braces, or the outer curly braces, you put in inner curly braces that define every single row. So this would be the first row, and then you have the second, third, fourth, fifth, etc., etc., all the way until the last row at the very end. Once you close out that row with the curly braces, and then you close out this outer curly brace over there, and that's how you do that. But uh, it initializes all the values to how you specify it in the exact order that you do. So the exact row order, and then also the exact order within the rows. But then you also have to put this um, parenthesis comma parenthesis right here, because it tells Visual Basic to expect 2D values after the equal sign, as opposed to like a, um, if you were declaring a one-dimensional array, you would have zero commas. If you were declaring a two-dimensional array, you would have one comma. If you did three, you would have two commas, but that's beyond what we're doing right now. But this tells Visual Basic how many dimensions your resulting array is actually going to have. So for example, if I had this string state capitals thing that I was trying to define by filling everything out myself, uh, what I would do is I would put in, you know, this single comma between the parentheses, of course. And then inside of my curly braces, I have the one outer one to say I'm defining the entire array right now. And then I have an inner curly brace to say I'm defining the first row, which contains California and Sacramento. Both of them as strings. They both have to be strings. They all have to be strings. And then I close out that first curly brace to say that I'm done with the first row. And then I put a comma and then separate it with a space or a line break because line breaks are okay after commas. And then I uh, do Nevada's row next. So um, I, put, I wrote Nevada here. That should be Reno. So that's my bad. But I'm too far into it at this point. Nevada uh, gets the city name Reno. And that's the second row. The third row gets Arizona and then Phoenix. And then uh, I'm done writing states at this point. So we'll just have a shorter state capitals thing right here. But I'll uh, put two curly braces at the very end. One to close out the final row and then one to close out the definition of the array entirely. If you want to store data inside of a two dimensional array, you would index into it like you would a string or a one dimensional array, but you specify the row number and then the, com the column numbers uh, separated by a comma. So 
String state capitals, zero comma zero is California, which is what we see over here. At uh, row zero, column one, I want to set it to Sacramento, which is up here. Uh, this is row one, column zero, row one, column one, row two, column zero, row two, column one, and so on and so forth. All right, as for the array methods and properties right here, uh, dot length gives the number of values in this array, but since we have a 2D array, it's actually going to give the number of rows in the 2D array, which is very important to, to note here. It gives the number of rows. Uh, and then the get upper bound method, I've actually changed it a little bit. Um, it gives the highest subscript of an array, but for a 2D array, it works a little differently than a 1D array. For a 1D array, you just have to put zero for this rank argument here. But for a 2D array, we can specify if we want the highest row subscript or the highest column subscript. You know, the highest row number or column number. So if I put in a zero, I get the highest row number. And if I put in a one, I get the highest column number. So that's really important. We can traverse 2D arrays using nested loops. For example, I have um, right here the int max row and the mint int max column variables. Uh, the max row is equal to the um, result of get upper bound passing in zero, and max call is equal to the result of upper bound uh, get upper bound passing in one. And then the outer loop. In the outer loop, you are going through the rows first. So you always look at the rows in the outer loop of a nested loop when you're tra traversing 2D arrays. You always set the row, or sorry, I shouldn't say always, but it's a lot easier sometimes to set the row and then the column. So you would look at the row first uh, from zero to the max value that you get using get upper bound. And then the column, you go from zero to the max column, and then you do whatever you want on the inside. However, what you can also do is use a for each loop. So for each double curve value, as a double in double values, do whatever inside the loop and then go to the next one. And that actually goes through in row then column order. So row zero, column zero, row zero, column one, row zero, column two, et cetera, et cetera, until it finishes that row. Then it goes to row one, column zero, row one, column one, row one, column two, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through every single cell by itself. Now, I had that bit of a flub up here where I said that you should always do row then column. You don't always have to do row then column. You could actually go column then row if you wanted to um, traverse through the 2D array vertically instead of horizontally. So row zero, column one, row one, column, sorry, row zero, column zero, then row zero, column, row one, column zero, then row two, column zero, then row three, column zero, and so on and so forth. Uh, doing a nested loop like this gives you that flexibility, whereas using a for each loop doesn't give you that flexibility. And then, of course, uh, you can do the equivalent of this using a do loop. So just an example uh, way that you can use the for each loop in a 2D array, I can create some accumulator right here and then use a for each loop to just add every value into that accumulator just like that. Here's the same problem, uh, but instead of using a for each loop, I'm actually using a nested for loop right here, where I uh, set max row and max call the same as I did before. I set our total to be zero, and then I increment the, or sorry, I uh, add to the total uh, the current value by indexing in to the current row number and then the current column number. So it does exactly the same as this, but with a lot more work, but with a lot more control if you ever need that extra control. So, you know, each of these has their upsides and downsides. It's good to keep them all in your toolbox. All right, and that is a primer for two-dimensional arrays. Um, they might seem a lot scarier, but fundamentally arrays will always be arrays. It's just a matter of stepping up to that second dimension and thinking about rows and columns. However, being in CBiz, uh, possibly having experience with things like Excel or even uh, database tables, that might be a familiar thought for you. So 
that's what we are thinking about with two-dimensional arrays here.